back to the Teens for Kingdom channel. My name's Brudgel and I invited you out here to see the lovely roses and the budding of the roses as well. And why I invited you to look at these flowers is just because of something the Lord told me a while back. And he said to me, Brudgel, you must blossom where you are planted. And I think this is really important in this day and age. Regardless of our situation or the circumstances that we are going through, the Lord invites us to produce the fruits of the kingdom. So come on, let's go inside and start with a prayer. So let us begin with a prayer. Oh Holy Spirit, we invite you into our presence. We ask that you may give us the word of God that we need. As it says in Luke chapter 24 verses 45, then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. Lord, we ask that you may open up our minds so that we can understand your word. And we ask the special intercession of Our Lady as we say together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. So what's currently going on in this world? Now Pope Francis invited all of us to help those who were most suffering. He said, do not abandon the suffering and those who are the poorest. In response to this, the eastern side of the Catholic Church sent 10 ventilators to Syria and a further three to Jerusalem as an emergency relief for those struggling most from this COVID-19 pandemic. You may have also heard of the Catholic charity called Caritas in Germany who supplied 1,000 food and hygiene baskets to those most in need. These are just a few examples of the beautiful things that is happening in the world today. So, one thing the Lord was really reminding me of as I was preparing for this was that our faith puts the plan of God into action. So what do I mean by that? For example, if we go into the Old Testament and we look into the book of Daniel, in Daniel chapter 3, it speaks of three friends of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, these three friends were invited to worship the golden statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. But they decided, regardless of how adverse the situation may be, they would not bow down to the king's statue, but only worship the true God. And you see this in Daniel chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. It says this way, they said this to the king, if our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire and out of your hand, O King, let him deliver us. But if not, let it be known to you, O King, we will not serve your gods and we will not worship the golden statue that you have set up. You see, in this time, by deciding not to worship the golden statue, they actually subjected themselves to be put in the furnace of blazing fire. But the Lord saw their faith and he sent an angel to be with them in that furnace. And that furnace of fire did not destroy them, but rather the mighty glory of God was shown. So the Lord is inviting us in this time to put our faith in him in our adverse situations so that his glory may be shown. Now Jesus is closest to us in our sufferings. I remember hearing recently of a woman and two children who lost the father and husband of that household. And they were saying, though there was much pain, there was a greater amount of peace in their hearts. Each day they felt the presence of Jesus and Mother Mary in their house itself. And more than that, they really felt the love and peace of Christ. In the lives of the saints, this is also seen how Jesus is closest to them during sufferings. St. Therese of Lisieux was during the influenza epidemic speaks of this very phenomenon. And though sisters around her were dying to her left or her right, and while she was caring and assisting for them, she speaks of how she feels the presence of God. And she says this way in her book, Amid all this desolation, I felt the hand of God, and I knew that his heart was watching over us. This is the very truth that the Lord is inviting us to believe in, that he is closest to us in our sufferings. 
In John chapter 16 verses 33, it says, In this world you face much persecution, but take courage, I have conquered the world. The Jesus is with us and he will strengthen us in all of our difficulties. In Psalm 34 verses 18, it says, The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and he helps the crushed in spirit. Mother Teresa goes on to say that it is in our sufferings that we have come so close to Christ that we can experience his kiss, that kiss of love. And in Romans chapter 8 verses 35 and 37, it asks us, what can separate us from the love of God? No destruction, no distress, no persecution, no famine. Nothing can ever separate us from the love of God. So in this time, I was reminded of something that happened to me recently. So roughly about a month ago, someone I loved became very unwell and had to go to hospital. And I remember being worried, being anxious, considering what would happen to this person I loved. But in that time, I really felt the presence of God. And I was so grateful for the gift of faith, because in this time, there was something for me to do. There was someone in whom I could trust. In Psalm 34 verses 4 it says, I sought the Lord and He answered me, and He delivered me from all my fears. And the Lord was reminding me in this time that He was with me. He spoke to me through the Word of God, as well as through St. Faustina's diary, just reminding me to trust in Him and that He had a plan and a solution for me. St. Padre Pio says this way, Sometimes the Lord enables us to experience the weight of the cross. And it may feel like it is unbearable, but the Lord gives us grace and love so that we can succeed in this and have this strength to carry us forward. You might remember in the Gospel of Mark how the disciples were on the boat and when that fierce storm came, even though the Lord was with them, they were afraid. But when they awoke the Lord, the Lord brought peace and calm in the midst of the storm. And that is the same that the Lord Jesus can do in our lives if we just call upon him. In this time, Jesus was also speaking to me about the importance of the free will that he has given us. See, God has given us wisdom and knowledge so as to live in this world in the proper way. And God is wanting us to pray for those who are in positions of power and those who are researchers, that they may get the divine wisdom on how to lead the people in this difficult time, how the researchers can find the appropriate treatment, the vaccination needed for this problem that we are facing. And the Lord is inviting us to, not just to help ourselves, but to help those around us, using the talents, the time that the Lord has given us in this beautiful period. Taking time to call friends and family to make sure that they are well, maybe offering a hand of help to those who are most in need, Maybe there are small acts of charity that we can do during this time. And the Lord is inviting us to go past just caring about ourselves, but to caring about others, using our time and maximizing it for the glory of his kingdom, showing others that truly we are the representation of Christ. I remember a beautiful song at this time, and the lyrics of the song goes this way. Christ has no body now but yours, no hands, no feet on earth, but yours. Lord Jesus is inviting each one of us to be his hands and his feet in this broken, hurting world. Lord Jesus is inviting us to share the love and peace that we have experienced with those around us. So in these times, the Lord was reminding me about the importance of not just looking at our current situation, but looking to the future, looking to the glory about to be revealed to us. What does it say in Romans chapter 8, verses 18? It says this way, I consider that the sufferings of this current time are not worth comparing to the glory about to be revealed to us. Lord Jesus is reminding us that though we are going through difficulties and sufferings at this time, but we have an eternal home. We have a higher calling awaiting us. Eternal joy and happiness is waiting us. That is the glory that the Lord is preparing us for through these sufferings. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9, it says this way, My grace is sufficient for you, but power is made perfect in weakness. In our weaknesses, in our difficulties, the Lord is inviting us 
to look not to ourselves, but to look to God who can perform mighty miracles in this moment of difficulty. In 1 John 4, 4, it says this way, Little children, you are from God and you have conquered them, for the one who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. And this is so important. When we realize who is within us, it is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will strengthen us. The Holy Spirit will empower us to see that this life is not just about the current things that are going on, but it is calling us to a higher reality, a higher calling that we as Catholics are privileged to share with God, which is the calling of heaven. Hallelujah. In the same way, we should also remember Isaiah chapter 40, verses 30 and 31. It says this way, Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the strength that the Lord has promised us if we start running as if for the kingdom of God, not considering too much of the difficulties we are going through, but realize that these difficulties are bringing us to the higher reality, a higher calling, the calling of heaven. In the same way, we should remember what the Lord Jesus told St. Faustina, which you can see in her diary. In extract 1499, it says this way, when St. Faustina was going through a difficulty, Jesus said to her this, Let it be confirmed and engraved on your heart that I am always with you, even if you don't feel my presence at the time of battle. The Lord is assuring us no matter what difficulty we face, He is with us and He will strengthen us and guide us. Let us now end off with a prayer, asking the Lord Jesus to bring into our hearts the fruition of the Word of God in Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guide your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Lord, we pray that this peace may flow upon us and upon all those around the world that we may all experience your love and your presence with us in our difficult moments. Mother Mary, intercede for us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Ad moiore de gloria.